Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Hurricane Ian is at our door. We expect drenching rain and sustained heavy winds over most of our state. Our message today is simple. Be smart and be safe. Listen to your local officials and be aware of potential flooding. Stay indoors and off the roads if you possibly can. And if you have to go out, do not drive through water. It only takes a few inches to sweep a car away. And in fact, we already have some road closures that our Secretary of Transportation will talk about in a minute. Over the past 24 hours, we've seen Hurricane Ian plow through the southeast, leaving destruction and death behind. And we mourn for those lives lost. This storm reminds us of how unpredictable hurricanes can be, changing course from the original forecast and again strengthening into a hurricane before making landfall in South Carolina that's going to happen really close to now. Now we are feeling the impacts in North Carolina. We're seeing significant rainfall, as much as eight inches is expected in some places, along with strong winds. We're seeing storm surge flooding along our coast and flash floods are possible across the state. And we may see some isolated tornadoes as well. State emergency management officials, the National Guard, and local first responders are staged across the state and working to keep people safe. And the state of emergency that I declared on Wednesday remains in effect. Power outages are increasing as the storm bears down. More than 29,000 homes and businesses were without power as of 1.30 p.m. Utility companies have brought in extra crews from other parts of the country and tell us they have thousands of workers ready to repair lines and clear down trees and debris. Our North Carolina Department of Transportation workers in all 100 counties stand, stand ready to help clear our roadways, and I met with some of them earlier today here in Wake County. And I want to take this moment to remember Anna Bradshaw, a Department of Transportation employee who was killed on the highway cleaning up debris last month. These workers are doing an important service, and I ask drivers to be aware of their surroundings and cautious so that we can keep our employees safe. At least 71 of our school districts are closed today or on modified school schedules. Both of our state ports in Wilmington and Moorhead City are now closed, and the ferry system has suspended all ferry routes until the storm passes. We expect winds, rain, and flooding to continue to impact us uh, into Saturday. And I encourage people to heed the warnings of local officials and make sure you have a plan if you are in an area with a flood risk. We've faced storms like this before, and we know what to do. Especially this weekend, I appreciate the efforts of our emergency management officials, our National Guard, our State Highway Patrol, and other first responders to keep people safe. Our thoughts are with our neighbors to the south, particularly in Florida, as they recover from the devastation that this storm brought. We currently have personnel on the ground in Florida, and after the storm moves on from us, we'll offer more assistance to them as they begin what we know will be a long and hard recovery. Today I'm joined by Emergency Management Director Will Ray, Public Safety Director, uh, Secretary Eddie Buffalo, our Transportation Secretary Eric Boyette, Major General Todd Hunt, the Adjutant General of the North Carolina National Guard, and Colonel Freddie Johnson, the Commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Our American Sign Language Interpreter is Nicole Fox, and behind the scenes, our Spanish language interpreters are Yasmin Mativier and Erica Kugla. Uh, at this time, I'll ask Director Ray for his update. Thank you, Governor Cooper. Good afternoon, everyone. The state emergency response team remains activated here at the state EOC and at our three regional coordination centers, and we continue to make adjustments based on forecast changes and respond to local requests as the hurricane approaches. Currently, 25 counties have opened or partially activated their local emergency operations centers. 
12 of those have local states of emergency in place. And here at the State EOC and in our regional coordinating centers, we've responded to about 50 resource requests from local governments. Our Swift Water Rescue Teams and Search and Rescue Task Force are now on station where we believe they will be most needed. We have increased the number pre-deployed from yesterday to 12 total teams staged across all three of our regional branches at this time. They're ready, but have not been needed to respond to any incidents at this point. The North Carolina National Guard has mobilized a number of force packages to support emergency response. Those personnel and vehicles are ready and pre-staged across the state in Asheville, Wilkesboro, Conover, Burlington, Greensboro, and Mooresville. Additionally, as we said yesterday, support from the Department of Transportation, the State Highway Patrol, the Office of the State Fire Marshal, and the Office of EMS continue to be engaged across the state to support effective response operations. Authorities in Cumberland County have opened a shelter in Fayetteville for those who need refuge from the storm, and the Rock City Campground at the Charlotte Motor Speedway remains open for hurricane evacuees as well. We continue collaboration with our local partners for potential post-impact sheltering needs, especially related to power outages. As the governor said, we are seeing power outages across the state, and while they are focused largely in the southeastern part of our state at this time, we are seeing them pockets of outages across all three regions of our state, and in the last hour have seen a steady increase in progression. As this storm progresses, the Ready NC website will be a place where you can find information on open shelters, on power outages, weather forecasts, and expected weather impacts, and information on how to be prepared. That's readync.gov. As we said yesterday, while we don't expect widespread evacuations will be needed during this storm, heavy rain in coastal counties will make flooding a threat. Visit knowyourzone.nc.gov to find out if you live in one of these evacuation zones and listen for your zone if evacuations are ordered. Again, it's good to be prepared, whether for this event or a potential one in the future. With very wet and sometimes dangerous conditions on the roads, please help to keep all of our law enforcement, transportation, utility, and other essential workers safe by observing the state's move over law. Reduce speed and change lanes to give roadside workers plenty of safe space. We appreciate all that those men and women do when the state is experiencing its bad day. The combined state, em state emergency response team, local, state, federal, tribal, nonprofit, and volunteer agencies in the private sector remain engaged and are working to ensure the protection of 10.5 million North Carolinians. I'm incredibly proud of the men and women of the team as they collaborate to make sure we can get the right resources to our local communities when they're needed. Again, we also need each of you as a part of that whole of community approach to check on your neighbors, your friends and family and look out for each other as we move through this storm to make sure everyone is safe and secure. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Director Ray. And now we'll hear from our Transportation Secretary, Eric Boyette. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. I first want to thank all of our thousands of employees from NCDOT and our partnering agencies who are preparing the state for this storm and have helped us respond over the coming days. Your hard work and your efforts are recognized, and we appreciate everything you do to keep us safe. Governor Cooper and I did visit today with our Wake County Maintenance Yard earlier and were prepared and watched how our teams are ready to respond to this storm. Our first responders across the state are working around the clock, and the best thing you can do is stay off the road so that they can do their job safely. NCDOT continues to actively monitor and respond to roadway conditions, and our roadway conditions are worsening. We are seeing more road closures as the storm is moving closer. We are keeping our eye on the storm surge in our southeastern counties, including an inward flow toward the sound and rivers. We are also experiencing isolated flash flooding and the potential for downward trees as winds are expected to increase in some of our areas. Our crews are patrolling areas to respond to any of those emergencies. We have thousands of signs, barricades, and other necessary equipment ready to respond for these efforts. Our staff at our traffic operations centers continue to monitor traffic conditions across our state 24-7. As you heard the governor, all of our North Carolina ferry routes are suspended at this time. Each route will reopen as soon as it is safe to do so. Our vessel activities are suspended today at both our Wilmington and Moorhead City ports, and at this time, all state-run passenger trains are continuing to operate, but please look at the latest schedules and visit ncbytrain.org. 
Looking ahead, once this damage is assessed, we will work to get our roads open as swiftly as possible. We may be using some of our contract partners as well, and they are prepared. Remember, as this day goes on, if you encounter standing water on a roadway, please don't chance it. One of our most important safety messages is, turn around, don't drown. Never drive around a barricade. They are there for a good reason, to protect you. Please stay off the roads in storm affected areas if possible. If you must venture out, be sure to check out the latest information on our road closures and travel conditions at drivenc.gov. In the next few days, please be on the lookout for our NCDOT crews and our first responders working in our areas. We want to make sure you, our first responders, and our employees make it home safe to their families. Again, thank you, and please be stay safe out there. Thank you, Governor. Okay, first, if there are any questions from people in the audience, we'll be glad to take them over here at this mic, if you'd like to. Good afternoon, Governor. Um, Elena Athens from ABC 11. I was just with you over at the maintenance yard as you were there, uh, you know, meeting with workers who are out on the ground doing this work and, and putting in long hours and doing so. What I believe I heard you say there was that um, perhaps central North Carolina is going to be a little bit more impacted than originally thought. So what does that mean for your overall uh, plan for this area? Are you mobilizing, deploying perhaps more crews here now? Well, one of the things that you learn in emergency management is that you have to be flexible and you have to plan for storm tracks moving one place to the next. We were looking at this being more of a Western North Carolina event a little earlier. Uh, the storm has tacked a little bit to the east, so we may see more rain in the southeastern and central part of our state than expected. So the, the road crews and emergency management officials are staged in different parts of our state. And if we see that needs are greater in one part of the state than the other, then those crews are ready to reposition. And that's why they've been spaced out the way they have been. So would that mean, I guess your greatest concern perhaps is those threats of flash flooding, um, where, you know, in past hurricanes, Florence, Matthew, we've seen those, those waterways really swell and just kind of put communities out. Is that the concern here? Yes, flash floods are a concern, and that's why we want people to go ahead and stay off the roads, to also listen to their local officials. They would be the ones to make a determination whether someone needed to evacuate an area. And so we want people to make sure that they have uh, radio with batteries or have some way to listen to those kinds of weather warnings if they would need to evacuate their homes. And we, we are concerned too with flash flooding on roads. This is a, why we want people to stay off the roads because sometimes people can find themselves in a situation where roads are flooding. And we know it does not take much to move a car, just a few inches of water. So we, we need everybody to be smart and uh, we need to respect the fact that these crews are out there doing their job, and we want people to stay home if they can. Yes, sir. Hey, Michael Hyland from CBS 17. This might be for you or Secretary Boyette, so whoever wants to take this one, but um, you would mentioned having the contractors come in. To what extent is the state having to rely on contractors? Is it any more than in years past, just with the challenges we've seen in hiring people these days? And have those contractors been able to fill in all the gaps so the response is what we would expect? I know we have about 2,200 DOT employees standing ready in all 100 counties, and I think the contracting uh, is there. If we need it, I'll let Secretary Boyette address that directly. Yeah, Michael, that's a great question. Our crews are ready, and we are prepared, and we've also worked with our contracting industry, um, and, and they're ready. It's, uh, it is a smaller staff than we've seen in the past, but, you know, we – we as an agency always work together with our partners and we're prepared to help the citizens of North Carolina get back to where we need to be. So do we have any questions from anyone on the phone? We have Gary Robertson from the Associated Press on the line. Go ahead, Gary. Thank you. Can you hear me, Governor? Can you hear me, Governor? We can. Great. 
Uh, I wanted to talk uh, either to you or uh, Director Ray about the fact that before the storm, the eastern half of the state was either in a moderate draw drought or it was abnormally dry. Does that have any impact on what you think the potential outcomes could be for flooding or for other weather-related problems, given the fact that the soil on the ground um, didn't have a whole lot of rain or, or moisture in them to begin with before the storm? Thank you. Uh, I think that helps us in this situation. When you look at our river gauges uh, across the state, you, you see levels that are green, which is positive. I think one of the problems that usually occur when, when flooding happens is that grounds are already saturated and you see the more potential for that. Will, would you want to add anything to that? I think, great question, Gary. I, I think a couple other things to, to um, mention in addition to what the governor said. Um, while we have not had significant rain and while this will certainly help our situation, I don't want uh, folks to take away that that minimizes the threat that we currently have. Um, right now, we are seeing some coastal surge, especially on the Pamlico, Noose, Cape Fear rivers. Um, some of that is moving inland. Again, it's in pockets right now. Um, again, does the, does the ground saturation help us? Uh, yes, for this event. However, um, that does not minimize the risk and again, I think reinforces the guidance that we've tried to provide both from public safety and from the Department of Transportation of folks really need to stay um, off the roads um, just with how quickly the water can move and shift and come and go. Um, that, that still is very much a threat and a hazard out there, whether in our southeastern part of the state along the coast or in some of our more urban areas, kind of triangle west, the ability of the water to go up and down very quickly is still very much a threat. So again, would ask folks that um, unless you need to be on the road um, over the next day or so that you take the opportunity to, to stay at home. Thank you. Thank you everybody for being with us today. Stay safe out there.